Welcome back to the podcast, Chalice Paul Disappeared, The True Story. Today we are discussing a family member, Chalice Pauls. She is a sister who is a fugitive of law in the state of Florida. Her name is Catherine Christine Murray, who was raised as Catherine Christine Alford. She liked to be called Kathy, so in this segment of this discussion, we will refer to her as Kathy. Kathy was born on July 29, 1954 in Madison, Florida, where she was raised with all her siblings. She married a man named William Murray, who was in the Air Force and was stationed in Britain when Chalice Paul went missing in 1981. Chalice, when I knew her, never talked about her family much, other than the fact that she wanted to help them all out but to get out of an abusive home they were all raised in. It wasn't until I did a trip to Atlanta in 1982 to do a follow-up on Chalice's disappearance and reached out to one of Chalice's flight attendant friends to help try to locate Chalice's family, assuming they did the right thing and reported her missing. Kathy Kelly, who was interviewed in episode two of this podcast, who went to the FBI with her husband prior and they told her a family member would need to report her missing as they did not have her in the system as missing to date. Kathy Kelly helped me locate Chalice's ex-husband, Donald Barnett, who I did speak to, and he directed me to call the Jonesboro, Georgia diner to find Kathy Alford Murray, the sister of Chalice. I mentioned this in one of my episodes how I had a complete emotional breakdown that night after speaking to Kathy while dining in a Buckhead diner with my own sister and friends. They had to retrieve me from the restaurant bathroom to take me out from crying hysterically. Why was I so upset? Well, because Chalice's own flesh and blood sister told me, quote unquote, I don't give a damn what happened to Chalice, and even if John Paul put her 10 feet underground because I will never forgive her for what she did to Mama. I replied, what did she do to your mother? She replies back, she made Mama lose her house. So it was obvious the family was not going to help in my quest to get answers on that trip. Now, years later, I sent on a private investigator to Madison to retrieve public records on the family house that I will refer to as the house of abuse. And after interviewing Donald Barnett again, there was supposed to be a real estate exchange of Donald Barnett giving up his shared house he had with Chalice in Jonesboro, Georgia, and give it to Chalice for her mother and sister to live in, because, after all, she left him. She was married to John Paul living in Roswell, Georgia. Um, He was going to take over Chalice's mother's house in Madison as he wanted to move back to Florida. Before Chalice married John Paul on May 26, 1980, At Lime Rock Park, after a race on the infield, the house was sold by Myrtle Ruth Alford, Chalice's mother, and signed over to John L. Paul on May 19, 1980, and it was filed in Gwinnett County and with the Madison County seal stamped on it. But what is more interesting is that there was an indenture filed prior on April 23, 1980 from Gwinnett County from John L. Paul to a man named Joseph A., and I hope I can pronounce his name, Grozinski, G-R-U-Z-C-Z-Y-S-K-I, out of Borea, Ohio, and the same description for the property in Madison with a State of Florida documentary stamp dated May 19, 1980. The property was sold for $11,000. That indenture had Chalice Barnett's signature on as a witness and had absolutely no claims to the real estate. The notary who signed off on all documentation was Libby, L-I-B-B-I-E, F. Flitter, F-L-I-T-T-E-R, out of Georgia. So how could Myrtle Ruth Alford, as she went by Ruth and her maiden name was Carney, have a clean title of John Paul bought this property from a man from Ohio. It was all very fishy, but to think that her own sister was so apathetic towards Chalice being missing and most likely was murdered is a human disgrace. Now moving on to current events. Kathy Murray has surfaced on social media under multiple alias names and at one point her own name briefly. She must have forgotten about our email exchanges 
that were done years prior when I found out about Colleen Wood's disappearance nine years too late by Googling John Paul Sr.'s name. I thought he was spending life in prison for attempted murder on Stephen Carson. No, he was released, came to South Florida, only to have another woman go missing, who was also last seen with him in Key West. Kathy gave several versions of events as to her last sighting of Chalice. In fact, she said she was still alive and had to protect her. She claimed she was working with a special agent with the FBI. This was all a ball-faced lie, as I have met with the FBI and U.S. Marshals, and there is nothing in the system of any reported chalice being missing or linked to John Paul. Until I did it, I did my own personal uh, incident report in Key West in 2014, thanks to Joe Arby, who's also interviewed in a segment on this podcast, who used to be with the Key West Police Department. Then I attempted to do so in Decatur, Georgia, because Key West sent me back to Georgia and said, you need to find the last person who found her alive, which I did. That was her old roommate, Anne Fazier. She's also on one of my segments of this podcast with her daughter. Uh, she was the last person to see alive. They both came with me to the Decatur Police Department with my husband, and they decided they could not take a cold case. They had no interest whatsoever, even with my binders of research and evidence I had in front of me. Okay, so today, Chalice Paul has never been investigated by any law enforcement agency. Kathy has surfaced for a reason, it appears, to attempt to discredit me and my years of hard work of research and investigate what happened to Chalice. Many trips were made, interviews were made, law enforcement in many municipalities were notified or met with me. Background checks were made, search engines with fees to use, all done by me solely. No one in Chalice's family paid for any of this. I am the only person who sacrificed my time and money to try to get the truth. I have been harassed, slandered, defamed by this woman, Kathy Murray, recently to most likely to cover her involvement with her own sister's disappearance and or using it as a distraction because of her own complicity. We have discovered on Ancestry an entry name under the name Carla Delphine Alford, another murdered sister of Kathy's, and they listed Chalice as Chalice Barnett, who was born in 1948 and, and died, yes, died in 2005. First off, Chalice was never declared legally dead to date. And she was born on August 31st, 1947, not 48. And there is no death certificate on her whatsoever. Now, this could be a typo on whoever entered this, maybe, right? Well, there is another entry on Chalice's father's ancestry account under the name Jesse David Alford, born on March 11, 1922 in Walton County, Florida. This account has Chalice listed as Chalice Jessica Paul Alford, born in August 1947. Got the month and the year right on, on the, uh, the, uh, uh, when she was born, but why would someone put her maiden name behind her married name? She was born in Walton County, Florida, according to this entry. Now it gets really interesting. When you put Catherine Christine Alford, there is absolutely no mention of Chalice being her sister, but the other sisters were listed. The same with Evelyn Charlene Larson, who was the only sibling family member who would help me find the missing pieces of the puzzle on Chalice. No mention of her on her account either. Carla Delphine, and Delphine actually is spelled with P-H-I-N-E not F-I-N-E, which is what it's listed on Ancestry. Her full name is Carla Delphine Alfred Anderson Power, which was her last married name was Power, who she was married to a man named Michael Joseph Power from Frazeyburg, Ohio, who died on September 11, 2003. Apparently both Carla and Michael lived in Alpharetta, Georgia, upon his demise. Prior to this marriage, she married a man named Keith Anderson, who I located on the west coast of Florida. He <coughs> told me that Carla's parents allowed him to marry her when she was 16 years old. And he shortly later went into the service, and when he got home, she divorced him and left. Carla was murdered in 2005, allegedly. In Atlanta, so I was told by her children and other sister, Charlene. The story was she was downtown Atlanta to go to the Social Security office 
when she got shot execution style in an alleyway. The problem is the death certificate, which I am waiting on, says she died in Decatur, Georgia. So someone is not getting the facts or story straight here. What is more interesting is when I did background on her, it was showing she got arrested in Atlanta for prostitution on April 28, 2000. Her husband dies in 2003, and her arrest record showed up as Carla Anderson, her former married name, even though she was married to this guy. Power. And she is murdered in 2005, but we'll get the correct date on the death certificate once I receive that. Then how could she be charged for theft by deception on December 6, 2012, if she is dead? Which we all know she is dead, but who stole her identity? There is only one suspect that comes to mind to me seeing how she did it to other family members, and that is Kathy Murray. Of course, I have to say allegedly, because I am not sure on the arrest record what transpired yet. The arrest was in Clayton County, Georgia. Another weird twist is the youngest son, Jesse Darrell Alford, was doing his genealogy and discovered he was listed as dead, for real, dead. When he reached out to me by finding me on chalicepaul.com, he wanted more information on Chalice. I did background on him and told him, said he was buried in Atlanta, Fulton County, Georgia, USA, in Oakland Cemetery. Who did this and why? Another attempt to steal a family member's identity, or was it used? And so to cover up the tracks, they claim he, him to be dead. We need to find this woman, Catherine Christine Murray, to ask questions, and quite a few questions, and done through law enforcement. She is wanted in what appears to be not only Florida, but also Georgia. She had charges in Fayetteville, North Carolina, for forgery. Her old roommate was interviewed in Niceville, Florida, who said her thing was stealing identities. Plus, she allegedly stole thousands of dollars from her own roommate. She was charged with grand theft in Florida, and that is still outstanding. Her charges has been confirmed by law enforcement that she has an extraditable warrant. So if anyone has seen this woman or who has fallen victim by her, please notify the Okaloosa Sheriff's Department by calling them at 850-651-7410 and call Crime Stoppers. And we will match the reward if safely captured for questioning. I believe her most current actions were of a federal offense by violating myself and my husband with the help of a local woman in Florida by using the United States Postal Service, which falls under mail fraud and committing cyber crimes as well, we've discovered. These indiscretions with family birth and death entries should also be investigated as well. We will continue the segment once we acquire more of a paper trail on Carla D. Power, is that is what we were told was on the death certificate. It is a shame that this family had no resources to do their own investigation on both women because of a deceitful, dishonest family member. Signing out for now. We will pick this up later. And also we, we must add that we have an interesting uh, person who remembered John Paul when he lived in Merritt Island. Um, that will be coming up shortly too as another segment. Signing out for now, Chalice Paul disappeared the True Story Podcast.